the 100th episode of the Breaking Beard podcast. But we've got Danny Mitchell back. If you've been around for a long time, you might remember Danny coming on the show uh, a while back when basically he was the only person who agreed to come on the show. <laughs> like about 20 people we asked. We, we sort of posed it to Danny because this is what he does. He, he, he builds family trees. But I need to know, am I related to this man? You made three outrageous claims to me. Now, the first claim you've already highlighted, the Moran yeah. connection. Yeah. You've also made another outrageous claim that you related to the man who broke the bank at Monte Carlo. Third fantastical claim is you related to Mick Jagger. I'm going to tell you that at least one of those is true. <sighs> this is f***ing class. This I hope is you're f***ing related. <laughs> I hope that's not true. I feel like Jeremy Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> the DNA test results. I'm Josh. And it's the 100th episode of the Breaking Beard podcast. Don't worry, that's the sign because the sign's wrong. Um, George, can you put some like CGI confetti on screen? Because it's 100. <laughs> Giving them too much work to do then. Feels like more than 100, I would say. Yeah, but there were a few left on cutting room floor though, weren't there? In the, true, true. In the early days. But we've got Danny Mitchell back. If you've been around for a long time, you might remember Danny coming on the show uh, a while back when basically he was the only person who agreed to come on the show. <laughs> like about 20 people we asked. Um, because Danny's like, uh, he tells us some mad stories about MMA and UFC and stuff like that. But he's also very interested in genealogy, right? Um, so uh, at the risk, well, I mean, we're going to do like a little family tree thing, right? Oh, we're not yeah, doing no, it now. No Dan, Dan I'm not the title will, will have given the game away. But yeah. like, well, how long ago was it? We spoke about, uh, about, about putting us two together because I, cl- I, I did initially say my nan's maiden name was Moran. So like me and Adam have got to be, we've got Man. to be. If that related. happens, I'm storming out of this studio. <laughs> yeah. like, the so like that, we, we sort of posed it to daddy because this is what he does. He, he, he builds family trees and, and, Sometimes helps, sometimes ruins families. <laughs> so yeah. I've even got my twin sister in the background because she's intrigued to yeah, find out. Yeah, she's not actually a twin sister. That's <laughs> <laughs> but, they look too, too alike, they've got to be. Let's start with the YouTube comments. Yeah. It's time for a YouTube comment from you. Okay, so his first comment is from Mr. Unholy Eagle. Would absolutely lo- uh, love another episode. Danny is super inspiring and you three are proper entertaining together. Well, there you oh, go. Thank you very much. Brought him back. This, yeah, it's a bit different this because obviously last time we're talking about fighting. That's my career. I've been yeah. a professional fighter since I was, you know, a young man, and now I'm doing genealogy, which is very it's a weird mix, isn't it? It's like, I don't know if that's a more like I used to work for a bank and now I eat food for a living. So I don't think it's those trajectories are probably equally a bit odd. But uh, <laughs> do what you want to do in life, right? Exactly. Next comment. Next comment from Zabadi. Uh, I want an episode all of Danny's street fights. Oh God! <laughs> what just talking about every time he's. You ain't, you ain't so. got enough fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I thought like being like a, a walking registered weapon, you wouldn't have got into that many street fights just, you know, f- for the sake of protecting other people from dying. But uh... yeah, to, to be fair, <laughs> my friends have had a lot more than I have, you know, street confrontation. But <laughs> yeah, there's some funny ones in there. And his last comment on the Danny Mitchell episode from Beard Meets Food. Why did you edit out the part where I choked him out and then called out Paddy the Baddy? <laughs> we can recreate that today. The, 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 the second part of that probably did happen. Not not me choking Danny out. That would, that would not end well for me. <laughs> See, we've got show notes here, George, but I reckon we're just getting to get into the mix of this because I, I I don't want to wait. Go for it. Daddy, this is your show now, mate. This like, is my this, show. This I is the, the 100th right, episode. I need to know, am I related to this man sat across from me? Yeah, I mean, let, let's 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 start from the beginning. Yeah, let's start from nice. the beginning. Let's, can we get? Well, let's get Danny in permanently. So you're <laughs> you jumping ahead of the key moment. Danny's gonna, Danny's gonna set the scene for us. Yeah, that's it. Josh <laughs> just fucking dives straight in there, doesn't he? Um, so yeah, so I got interested in genealogy, doing all this history stuff. Really interested in that, and obviously talking to you all the time. You made three outrageous claims to me. Now the first claim you've already highlighted is is the the Moran yeah. connection yeah yeah which we will explore. <laughs> um, you've also made another outrageous claim that you related to the man who broke the bank at Monte Carlo. 
Do you remember this? No. You actually told me this. This is legit from you. And, and your sister's nodding, so you have obviously lost some brain cells. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've, um, he's been training this morning, mate. Somebody yeah. probably penciled him. So, so the claim that you met, and a lot of people come to me like, oh, yeah, will you do my family tree? My granddad said that I'm related to... Right, okay, or yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah. That, that is actually how I got into genealogy. <laughs> is my, I swear to God, is my, my granddad... Um, this is going off trajectory, but it'll tell you how I got here because people are saying, well, why is this fighter guy interested in... We should tell us, Danny. We assumed it was CTE. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, 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 does, that, that does... Brain damage does play a part in it. <laughs> um, but it was actually my, gran, my granddad. He... Um, when he was alive, he he used to he used to say, "Oh, it, my granddad was from Wales. Yeah, he lived in Wales, and uh, you know he told me this you know fantastical story that he used to um, live in a castle. Oh, our, our our family in particular owned a castle in Wales, and they all farmed around the castle and stuff, and that's what they did. And I'm like, yeah, it probably wasn't a castle. It probably just like a big house, but, you know. <laughs> anyway." Um, then I start getting into martial arts, boxing as I get older. And he's like, oh, yeah, um, we had a boxing gym in the castle. And I'm like, all right, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, uh, Randolph Turpin, who was, you know, a world champion back in the day. He actually killed his own family, I believe, because he went a bit mad. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, ignoring that, he was a very good boxer. And he actually trained uh, in this castle. And, uh, and he sparred with my great grandfather in the castle and uh yeah just this fantastical story that just and, and my granddad you know got really bad dementia and and eventually died and that but that story was like ingrained ingrained but i didn't believe it i didn't believe it for a second i was like some castles you know boxing it's, it's like just a, like a grandpa simpson thing where you tell the story <laughs> which isn't real but it turned out to be real yeah and That's so cool. and then i've always had an interest in history like at school i loved history and, uh, yeah, so I started, you know, one day I started, you know, looking into the family tree, doing a little bit of digging onto the Welsh side, which is my mum's side. And, uh, yeah, I, I came across um, a guy called Jesse Rennie, who uh, is, he is my great grandfather's first cousin, okay? And he owned... Um, a massive castle in Wales, and it is the castle that was used for I'm a Celebrity. No way. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, mad. Yeah, which is, a, which is mad. So when I discovered this, so there's literally a picture of him. You can Google his name, and there's a picture of him stood at this castle. Get and, it on screen, George. Yeah, yeah. well, I'll, I'll get you yeah. the picture. And, yeah, basically the family lived in the castle grounds, farmed, you know, in that area, and the castle was owned by, by the family. So I was like, wow. And it's a fucking proper castle. It's not just like a manor house with a <laughs> no, big no, wall. I've seen it. I, yeah. I mean, I don't watch Shamus Celebrity get me out of it. Yeah, God yeah. Forbid. But I until, until you're on it and you, you win. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, they keep rumouring that, don't they? <laughs> I go on there and eat fucking Nigel Farage's leg live <laughs> on TV. <laughs> so yeah, this this mad fantastical castle story, turned that part of it turned out to be true. So then I'm like, wow. So then I start researching the castle you know, and I'm and I'm reading about it, yeah. and it's like, oh yeah, you know, Randolph Turpin actually trained there for his fight with uh, Sugar Ray Sugar Ray Robinson when he fought for the world title, and he actually won as well. Um, and I'm like, what? Like, so the, so that event, so he was actually at the castle, you know, training. So I thought this could actually be true. This could be a real thing. So I start searching for you know, photos of, of him training in this castle. There's loads of them. They've got like a set up with bags and stuff. There's a castle in the background and the, he's hitting the bag. So I'm like, wow, like they actually had a boxing gym in their castle. <laughs> That's mad. So that is true. Yeah. And then um, going through some BBC archive footage, stumbled on, you know, a video of him actually sparring in the castle, Jeez. which is mind blowing. You know, like I, I made a joke about it because there's always people like bullshitting about fights. Like uh, <laughs> you know, you know the people yeah. who on Facebook saying they've had X amount of fights and it's all bullshit or whatever. And I'm like, I made a little joke about it. like these, pe these people saying, you know, in 2024 or in now that I've had, you know, I fought this guy in this place and there's no evidence that it ever happened. Yeah, I can go and I can find a black and white 
video of my fucking great granddad sparring in a castle in Wales. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just a mad. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's, stop change. It's, shit. It's, it's, yeah, it's just, it's just fucking bonkers, isn't it? That you yeah. can actually see that. Um, so yeah, I was like, wow, like he weren't actually lying. <laughs> then I started thinking, what else did he tell me? Like, what other shit did he claim? So, uh, but that's how I really got deep into this genealogy stuff. It's a mad concept, isn't it, really? Because they say, like, you die twice, like, when, you, when you're buried, when no one mentions you ever again. And, like, you're, bringing, you're actually digging up the past yeah, and yeah. reliving the people's lives. I, I think lives. it's important. I think, like, a lot of people don't like it. Like, oh, I don't give a fuck what happened in the past. But whether you like it or not, what happened in the past, and obviously sometimes it's bad things what have happened in the yeah. past and people want to bury that. But everything what happened in the past, all the wars, all the... You know, marriages, deaths, everything led to this point. Yeah, now. like when you went to Epstein's Island and they released the. I fucking knew that. You know what I knew that? I, this I spent so much time with him. Right? I knew it was coming. In fact, I, I was almost certain that he was going to put my name on some fucking like photoshopped Epstein list yesterday. I wouldn't be fucking old enough for a start. <laughs> Fuck off, you. But yeah, so coming back to Josh's fantastical claims. Um, yeah, so Joseph Hobson Jagger right. was the man who uh, broke the bank at the Monte Carlo Casino in Monaco. Um, so you actually told me this fact. So who did that come from then? All oh, right, okay, yeah. So there's that, that yeah, yeah. So you have the Jagger side of the yeah, family. Yeah, so my sisters in the cottage just said that my granddad had passed this information on. Yeah. yeah. So, so there is a man called Joseph Hobson Jagger, and he uh, Joseph yeah. Jagger. That's a gangster. Joseph name, Jagger. Joe what a guy. Jagger. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he, he broke the bank at Monte Carlo. So he, um, it, what he did, it, it, it was, uh, studying roulette and, uh, yeah, he won fuck loads of money. Uh, but we'll come back to him. But okay. I, I'm just saying Whoa, that. Oh, the has been that dangled down. Uh, I'm like, on edge of his seat. Yeah, <laughs> you, made, you made this fucking claim, so yeah, you best hey, know. Hey, that's, that's fine. I stand and by then that. And then the, the, so you've got the connection with Adam. Yeah. Is that our, the first fantastical claim? Yeah. The second one is the guy who uh, won fuckloads of money at Monte Carlo. Yeah. He was actually from Bradford as well, which is this weird. good lineup. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that was good lineup. And then um, the third fantastical. You're looking at me confused. I can't remember that. Right, you I obviously know because this is a big one. The third fantastical claim is you related to Mick Jagger. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose that could be true given the name. Right. Got, so, so, on, it? We've got so what be. I'm going to tell you right now. So out of them three claims. I'm going to tell you that at least one of those is true. <sighs> this is fucking classic. I hope you're not fucking related. <laughs> this is the best I hope that's not a true one. <laughs> this, I'm so musical. It's got to be the Mick Jagger one, right? <laughs> I could imagine you dancing like Mr. Mick Jagger. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the lips. So, hey, this could, this could be bang on. Hey, get some injections. <laughs> get <him sore. laughs> We could have you like a fucking fish sticking into the wall. We'll come, we'll come back to the fish thing anyway. Um, so we, you did, you both did your DNA. Yeah, fuck it. That, took him ages. That's been wait, 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 wait a second. That's been passed on to the CIA now by this uh, <laughs> investigation. <laughs> Listen, man. You know what? You know what? The thing about that is, right? He was giving me grief, saying like, "Have you done this shit?" As if it was my fault. You got to like spit in, which is fucking disgusting, by the way. You got to do loads of spit into this little vial, and then you send be it honest, off. You, you, you ejaculated to it first time. <laughs> well, that's what I thought. I would not. I, didn't. I uh, it'd be like a fuck. It'd be like powder in there, mate. What are you talking about? It just air would. Anyway, like um, just dry. So, so I, I, yeah, I, I sent it off, and then uh, when they, they update like the online, uh, you know, the, the like, little thing, hub yeah. thing, yeah. yeah. And it said, like, you've done the test wrong. And I'm like, the fuck I did. Like, I was spitting on that shit for, like, about an hour. <laughs> so, I, anyway, I had to do it again. But in the end, it did work. I felt and so... you just had loads of, like, ribs or something. And you just, like, <laughs> spitting in. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. I, was just, like, <laughs> I felt so bad for Daddy. Because, like, one thing that we need to make crystal clear is this is a laborious task. Like, it's hours and hours and hours of manually searching yeah. to, to put this information together. And you fell at the first hurdle of fucking <laughs> spitting in a tube. So, and it takes weeks. The, and it, and it came back non-conclusive. You had to go again. But it's clearly the case that somebody fucked up the sample. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Well, it wasn't me. Because what, what sometimes happens is, obviously, there's two ways you can do it. You can build, I can just build a tree. You can tell me who your parents are, grandparents, and we can build a tree based on records. But then sometimes, and then you might get that tree and be like, that's my family. But then sometimes if you do DNA, that may not match up to what the records are actually saying. So there might be some illicit relationships there could be some things that you don't know about and you know so it's important 
doing your DNA is is a good way to get all that to kind of match up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, Makes uh, sense. You find some, you know, mad relatives and stuff like that. I've, I've done so many, um, so many now. And like you say, it's a laborious task. It takes a lot. People always say, oh, do my family tree for me tonight. See if I'm related to so-and-so. I'm like, mate, like, <laughs> it's not that easy. You know, I don't just click a button and I can see your yeah, entire yeah. family. You know, you have to look through records and stuff and it, it takes a lot of time. Um, but I do enjoy it. Are you still taking on? Are you still taking on customers for this? Yeah, I'm still taking on customers. But p- people think that it's like, oh, oh, what is it like? Twenty quid, and you'll do me tree. It's like, nah, you know, it, it's like you pay by the you, hours. You're paying, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're paying for the time, basically. And the amount of hours that I've put into this for you guys is is huge. And I could literally keep going for like. Can you I do mean, me a favour, Danny? Will you send him the invoice yeah, because like yeah. I'm, I'm feeling a bit like. Do you know how rich he is? You'll find out. He <laughs> actually owns that castle you're on about. <laughs> that, we could actually buy it and start a new business. <laughs> <on there. laughs> um, so yeah, so it's uh, it's been mad. I, you know, I found some, I found some crazy like family secrets. What's the maddest thing that you found on people's? Go on. Can he tell us the thing that we, he was just talking about outside? Without uh, is that with, the most without, extreme story? No, no. It was the most extreme. No, like, so, <laughs> I mean, so I found a, a few people have said about find you know finding certain relatives like I don't know I don't know who my dad was you know, um, so that's a big one. Sometimes I've had a couple of occasions where people's parents aren't actually you know who the, who they think. Laura, imagine if it's there's dad in as dad. You, nuts, you, you guys are safe. You right, are safe. Okay. I'm going to say I that. I thought we were going to get a new dad today. Before, yeah. <laughs> um, the funny thing about that is, though, because that, that kind of like, if you've got to break that to somebody, that's yeah. almost like you would need training, really. And, yeah. You know, like counsel, grief counseling, like yeah. training. It's just to say, like, sorry, mate, it's not your dad. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I mean, luckily, the, the, all the people I've had to break it to, the parents have actually been deceased. So right. it's been a little bit easier. You, you know, you don't have to have that conversation then yeah. because. Like, I didn't realise when I'm starting this, obviously there is a lot of, um, you know, I, I had someone message me, like a disgruntled person message me the other week because I was um, in contact, you know, one of my clients had done the DNA and I was in contact with someone in another country who was their relative, their close relative, and they were trying to find their father, which I managed to locate. Um, and because I was speaking to this other relative, asking questions about what they knew about that side of the family, another family member from there messaged me and said, can you please stop asking? You know, you, you've gone too far or whatever. And I'm like, whoa. Oh. But I, I did uncover a few sort of family secrets that maybe didn't want to be um, it's a out, good job out you're in the open. It's a, yeah, good, yeah. It's a good job but, you're solid. <laughs> but, but I mean, I won't go into the details of, of what I did. And it's actually one of the earliest trees that I started. And I'm, it's one of them that's been ongoing all this time. Um, and it's, it's one of the best ones uh, that I've done in terms of the results because I literally, someone who didn't know who their father was, I literally found out who he was, where he was, and... Now they are in contact with um, his sister uh, and they also found that they have a sister uh, that was unknown. Wow. And uh, yeah, so I've, I've met, they've met each other now. They've got loads in common. They look similar. You know, they've named the children the same names. The children had the same occupations. It's like they've led a parallel life. Man, um, that must be quite rewarding then. This yeah, so, nice so, so when that happened, I was like, wow, this is this is really good. Yeah, and, man. Uh, but. Yeah, so so that, that's one of the best. That's one of the most rewarding ones I've done because it was literally a a guy. Again, I won't go into the details, but it was a guy who turned up. You know, had a kid disappeared. Maybe told a few lies about who he was, and uh, I'll I'll give you the <laughs> na- I'll just give you the name that he gave because uh, as soon as this person messaged me and, and and asked me about you know potentially finding the father, and they said they didn't know who he was. They knew the location. He wasn't born here. He was born in a different country. Um, which is obviously tougher as well because the records are different in different countries. But uh, he'd given the name Bill Oddie. <laughs> <laughs> that was the name I was given. I'm like, I, I, I don't know who my dad is. You know, is 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 this guy? You know, this this and this. There was some information in there about where he was from. And then the name I was given was Bill Oddie. And I spat my cup of tea out and I'm like, listen, I'm telling you right now, the guy's name is not Bill Oddie. <laughs> it's like they must have just been watching, you know, <laughs> TV. TV and the- that was like on How I Met Your Mother. Have you seen that program where he's like, he's watched it, the, the, the main guy on like, I don't know, The Price is Right. His mum were like, that's your dad. So all his life he's like, that's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. So yeah, Bill Oddie. So I managed to track down Bill Oddie, and uh, he yeah. wasn't called Bill Oddie. He wasn't called Bill Oddie. He was, uh, yeah. But there's always a slight bit of truth in in, you know, when people use like a fake name. There's always some reason. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, like so, you like you like owls. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Oddie, Bill Oddie and so he was actually called William. Uh, uh, he was actually it. born William, William. and uh, yeah. So anyway, we tra- we traced him, and uh, yeah, you know, we got some really good results. And, and again, that's still ongoing. There's still new family members cropping up and stuff from the DNA, which is is really cool. It's um, wild, isn't it? That yeah. So what's the worst then? What's the worst you've come across? Or like the worst experience of this? Um, dare I ask? Yeah, I mean, I had one. <laughs> I had one. Um, one person from the gym who you will know very well, um, I did his father's DNA. He did his DNA, wanted to find out about his heritage or whatever. And the guy was, this guy was born in Grimsby. Nice. Yeah. So, <laughs> docks, right? I'm sorry, people from Grimsby. And he was, bo- he was born uh, during World War II in Grimsby. So, you know, this guy's my dad, this guy's my mom, start building the tree, he's done his DNA, and I get zero DNA hits to anybody on his paternal side so that's a bad sign you know if you get one or two hits to like grandparents great grandparents there's some connections you know you're on the right track you're at least in the right family but yeah i got zero so i'm like eh, this is not good then when i look on his dna his top dna matches are all in america and there's a certain family name that kept cropping up so i, I asked him like do you know this family name and he was like Never heard of it. And I'm like, well, these people are like very, very closely related to you. Like, you know, you can get sort of predictions of where, how someone is related to you. I'm like, this guy's either like your uncle or your half brother. You know, it's it's so close. Uh, and, and anyway, so what I did is uh, um, so, some people put their family tree public and you can look at the tree and stuff like that. So luckily one of these guys in America had his tree public. So I started looking at his tree and... Uh, I thought, what if I start to build this guy's tree based on that this family is his family? So I made a few assumptions and started to build the tree. DNA hit started to come in. So I'm like, right. <laughs> so this is his real like paternal family here. Uh, managed to find out who his father was. Um, his, his father had, had passed away. But um, it turned out his father was an American sailor in World War II. And I even found the log of him docking at Grimsby around about the time that he would have been conceived. So it's like the pa- there was the paper trail, there was the, you know, the DNA was matched perfectly then to who I thought was his dad, his brother. So I contacted um, his half-brother and said, listen, this is the stuff I've got. Um, and then he was like, listen, no. I, I think, when was they born? They was born sometime in the 40s. Uh, and he was like, uh, no, my, my mum and dad got married in 1937, so it can't be true. And I'm like, yeah, your mum and dad got married, but you, your dad was over here in the 40s and he had another child. Like, there's evidence there. And he was like, no, they were married. No, no, I'm not having it. And he just blocked me. <laughs> and I was like, ugh. So it, it's sad sometimes. But obviously, people don't want to hear that, do yeah, they? That, you know, your dad were messing around or whatever. And you, yeah. I'm, I've had other people who found similar things out, which we were talking about before, and, and they was really happy to find out about this other part of the family that they had. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's not not for everyone. So there is a risk. There is, is inherent risk. Isn't with, it nuts? Uh, it was like we went into this like really like naive. Yeah, like, like, you, okay, you, yeah, let's do I it. I could have got your DNA and just be like, yeah, you've adopted, you've uh, got no family. It wouldn't, it, family. it wouldn't like bother me. I, well, I, I look too much like my fucking dad. <laughs> that I, that, yeah. like, I'm so not. I'm sorted on this. Like my, maybe my mum's not my mum. I don't know. But I'm, <laughs> I think I think I've got pictures. But that wouldn't like it wouldn't like crush me or something. Or like if I found out gen, like my sister wasn't related to me, I'd almost be fucking relieved. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Sorry yeah. if you're watching. But yeah, there is, so there is some stuff like that. So you've got to be ready for that. But yeah. um, I think you used to are safe. Oh, that's good then. But you did your DNA. And when you do your DNA, you get like, yeah, you know, your, I, I'm sure you looked at it like your origins, like your DNA origins, like where yeah. where you're from. Yeah, I, I can't remember exactly what mine was, but I, there was lots of I, Irish and Scottish in there, which I think I kind of, I didn't know about the Scottish part, but I think yeah, I knew yeah, about the Irish part. Yeah, so... Uh, We'll, we'll, we'll start with you. So uh, did you check yours? Did you have a look I at yours? I think you might have sent me a picture, but I can't remember now. Yeah, yeah. I have it's months has passed on it. Because so. everybody here is like, English, I'm English, yeah. whatever. But So you are, according to your uh, genetics, f- 41% English. Okay. 
37 percent irish oh so co- high, man. yeah it's very high yeah top of the morning to you let's go changing, yeah 11% Scandinavian. <laughs> yeah, you've got that Nordic look, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, 9% Scottish and 2% Welsh. Sweet. Yeah. And that sort of, I mean, you've got quite a lot of Irish in there, but that kind of mixture of that is is like a typical, what, what you would typically find. Obviously, the percentages go up and down. Yeah. You've got quite a lot of, uh, <clears throat> you, you know, you're over a third Irish in terms of genetics. So I, I'm, I can basically say, like celebrate St. Paddy's Day. Yeah, basically. You are, you are Irish. McGregor. You, you are like, McGregor. Yeah. McGregor's come back. I don't start, even think Irish people like McGregor. Start, <laughs> start letting that accent come through now. Yeah. <laughs> this is what a revelation. <laughs> <laughs> you ready for this, Laura? I say we're Irish now. <laughs> um, and then, so you've got like a, a, genetic, like a genetic affinity, affinity to Yorkshire. So... so what it what it does is on ancestry the, the DNA on ancestry it shows you like the the regions where a lot of your like uh, DNA relatives are yeah. from. So yours is Yorkshire. You're very Yorkshire. Yorkshire. Oh, Yorkshire no based. fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> so before I ask you about be bef- that, before man. I ask you about so so what do you, you know you're obviously you know about the Moran name you know about your Irish. It's ancestry. a very fucking Irish name, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. You know I mean, oh Moran, yeah. Yeah. We'll get into that where that comes from, but um, any other. Any other regions where see the Irish and English? I, I, I'm, I'm assuming mostly Irish and English, but yeah, I, I, yeah. yeah. So if you tell me anything else, so, I'll so you're thir- thirty-seven percent English. Yeah, was that how, how, how much? What percent? I was forty. So he was forty-one. Fucking yeah! I'm actually happy that I'm not as English as you. You're actually only twenty-four percent Irish. I'm more less. Irish than you, you can. <laughs> yes, that's fucking harsh. Wounded. Yeah, there you go. You're eighteen percent Scottish, so twice as Scottish as uh, a Josh nearly. There you go. 10% Welsh, 8% Scandinavian, and 3% Germanic European. Germanic European? <laughs> Which we all kind of are, like the English mean? tribes are, are from, Germanic. From we are. Germania, or what used to be Germania, <laughs> Germany. Right. Germanic. So, yeah, we <laughs> are. And, and your, um, the regions, you, you know, your, your genetic regions is Yorkshire. And you, I, I'm guessing you know this is Cornwall, is Co- it? Yeah, my grandma's from Cornwall. You know, Cornwall. it's funny as shit, man. She was always telling me she's mad as a box of fucking frogs, man. Yeah. Honestly, I, we'll get her if she doesn't die this year. <laughs> we'll get her on, right? Because she's mad. And she used to fucking tell me, right, that, she, um, that I knew she was from Cornwall, right? I knew that was legit. But she's yeah. got like about 20 brothers or some shit, or 20 siblings. And she used to tell me that they were like pirates. And I'm like, yeah. you mean smugglers? Yeah. And she's like, uh, no, well, pirates. Well, listen, just put a pin in that. All right, okay. <laughs> just put a pin in that. All right. <laughs> When Danny tells you something, you still don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just put a pin in that. But, but that, so that's interesting to know. Like, really, I should have asked. You, like, obviously, Josh gave me these fantastical claims. You didn't really give me anything. But that's so. So she she was saying that she was related to pirates. Do you that's know? Like, yeah. Do you know yeah, why? She says it. Yeah. Do you know why? Is that why you've got a limp? <laughs> <laughs> do you know why like, pirates are called pirates? Because they are. Ah, uh, you think it's the R, but it's actually the C. <laughs> Come on. Nice, Did you guys that. rehearse that? I feel, like that was, that, I feel like that was rehearsed. Do you know what an angry pirate is? Yeah, go we, won't, we won't go into that. Google it. <laughs> Just Google that if you're at home. I don't want to get this podcast taken down. Angry pirate. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's, something, it's something you can do with a lady friend. I don't want to go back over this, man. We had enough of that. It involves, blind, it involves blinding her in one eye, kicking her in the shin, and she's like, ah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> can, we get, can we get back to my uh, whatever the fuck we were talking about? Yeah, so, so let, we'll, we'll start with you then. So your your name obviously is Irish. Yes. Uh, the Moran family um, comes from the County Mayo Sligo area, which is like a northwest of Ireland. Did know that part. Um, yeah. yeah, and the you, the actual meaning of your name. Do you know anything about that? Isn't it like French or something? Uh, no, no, so it's actually Gaelic. Oh, and, right, no, and, no, no. And, and it means <laughs> it means big. <laughs> yeah. it means like great or big like more great more. I mean come on yeah. fuck it hell. so it's like uh, the big chief so there was, there was probably some big guy who like was the progenitor you're of, like the of fucking the runt of the litter I'm, I'm gonna get like I'm gonna get uh, like a little name uh, you know those little desk thingies yeah. it's like great one great slash big the great matter. the big chief big Irish cunt um, so that the problem with Irish ancestry is a lot of the records got destroyed and stuff so it's very hard to get too far back okay. in in Irish records. So the furthest I actually got back for your direct Moran line was a guy called John Thomas Moran. He's your th- three times great, so great, great, great grandfather. He was born 1811 in Ireland and he died 1866 in Liverpool. 
Shit um, bastard. That was that, like 50, 55 years. That'd been a good run back then, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe yeah, 1811, yeah. <laughs> Fucking shit. Um, shit say what he died of, no? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So, but, um, yeah, so that's, you know, that's as far back as we could get that line. Obviously, there's way more, that's way more still, than that. That's still impressive. I wouldn't have thought you could even get that far. Oh, great, listen, great, mate, great. We're, we're, we're going deep today. I mean, we've, <laughs> we're, we're talking, like, I've spent hours on, I've been up night after night just delving into I your family that, history. Though, yeah. I, I feel like I know you invoice. more than you. <laughs> um, and then, so what I like to do as well is when, where I can is, is find fo- like old photos, you know, get old photos yeah. of, of people. So the, the sort of oldest one I could find on your, on, on this Moran Irish side was a woman called Mary Hart. So, so she's your great, great grandmother. Right. She was born 1849 to Irish parents. She was born here to Irish parents her daughter, Ellen McDonough, married George Moran, your great-great-grandfather. Okay, never heard of him, but okay. Um, <laughs> so. Oh, we got the actual pictures. Fucking this hell. is a picture of her. She look anything like me? So it's a pretty bad picture, but, uh, yeah, that's a it's, a, picture. but it's a nice old picture. It's just something She's not there, really so. making much effort with the pose there. There's no, no smile. There so that's a, that's an old one. Maybe she had bad teeth or something. Interesting. She, she, looks, she looks about as miserable as me. That's scary, that. That's a scary looking, looking oh, man. <laughs> you can't say Sorry, that. Beat that, George. <laughs> <laughs> we should get, I'm seeing something in the eyebrows. The eyebrows look kind of similar. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. If, you, if you get a sharpie, we'll put yeah. a beard on her. That's like, that I, is you. I wish I had had that curly. Yeah. Well, something happened along the way. They've old photos where they don't smile. <laughs> so yeah, you can, you know, so, and so for some people, I find loads of old photos like this. Obviously, it depends... Certain families are going to upload old photos and stuff like that. They're not just old photos; don't magically appear on the on the internet. Mm. Um, so there's obviously family connections in Ireland or whatever who got you know this person as an ancestor. So, but it's pretty cool. Isn't to that find. amazing that you've got a photo from yeah. like that far back? I didn't expect it would be anything like this detailed. No. I'm impressed. Dan. Oh, there's more. There's more to come. This is <laughs> We're just scratching the surface here. Um, so right, let's go on to Josh. So Josh Gudgeon. So you're named after a fish, basically. Or a part of an engine. Yeah, uh, well. Or is it the fish? It's the fish, oh, mate. Right, it's the fish. <laughs> it works though, because you know you've been nah, in the so, navy. So, and so yeah, exactly. So, so, so the name Gudgeon is actually it's French. So it would have came over with the Norman invasion. So you know, ten sixty six. Um, you know, William the Conqueror and all his pals came over, and after William um, took over, what he wanted to do is tax everyone because he needed to pay for all the war and he did <laughs> so um what happened then is once taxes came in place people's you know had to get a fixed surname that were like the the thing you know it's very hard to tax people if you don't know who the fuck they are and what family they belong to and stuff so um so people people got different surnames so again moran was from you know it could have been from a guy who was just a big guy like some big chieftain or whatever and yeah that and his ancestors took that name uh, so for yours is that gudgeon is a french word for it's a fish yeah so they could have been fishermen okay so it could be fishermen and uh <laughs> do you know what i mean great fish <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, you should be doing there. I'm bigger than you, yeah. and you eat a lot. So like, come on. Um, so I did manage to trace your direct. It's very hard to trace your direct line. You know, um, I only got mine back to like the 1700s for the actual Mitchell name. Obviously, sometimes rec- all, all you need is one time where the records stop, the records yeah. are missing, or they're incorrect, and then you, the line's gone. Um, but I managed to get to Robert Gudgeon who was born in 1554. So he's your, you know, distant grandfa- oh. great-grandfather, you know, back 500 years he was born, yeah, skipped to North Yorkshire. Wow. Um, so, yeah. He, that's... He's not moved very far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's thinking, fuck it, we're like 20 miles down the road to Leeds. Yeah. <laughs> Give us some effort, man. <laughs> that's it. You've been sailing on the oceans, but your family have not moved anywhere. Whoa, 500 years? That's Bobby yeah, Robert yeah. Gudgeon. Robert Gudgeon, big Bob. Big, Big Bob the Fisherman. Big Bobby G. <laughs> <laughs> that's sick, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's pretty cool. And then in terms of photos, I think I sent you this anyway, but um, we've got uh, Arthur Gudgeon, born 1873 in Yorkshire. <laughs> uh, and this photo is him with his wife, Jane, and her brother-in-law. Um, so and I, I really think this looks like Josh. How, far, how far back is this one from? This is 1873. Oh, he was born. That that is Arthur Gudgeon at the top there. Spitting image, mate. Look at that guy. What a guy. 
What a tash. <laughs> I need to get that tash. You need to just copy that style exactly. That's sick, that. <laughs> Do you want to see that? Here you go. Do we see that Josh's, Josh's sister's off camera? She's, she's very intrigued to find out uh, yeah, about so, so, so he's your camera. direct, you know, <laughs> great, great, great grandfather. Um, yeah, pretty cool to find that. He's got that you fucking can, swelled thing going on like you as well. You can stick yeah, that in the family it's, album. His head's big. Yeah, but he, he, do, do you agree that he has got a look I think there's you? a likeness yeah, there. Yeah, there is a likeness. It's not like he's just yeah. some random dude. You, I, a... I think genetically you've improved, but you, you are more attractive than he is, I've got to say, at the risk of offending his In spirit. his time, though, he might have been the boy, you know. Maybe, what I mean? you never know. Pocket watch and everything, man. Now you look fresh. You need to just dress like that. <laughs> yeah, he ironed his clothes at least. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, yeah, so... That brings us on to the connection between you two. Is the Moran so so? How how are you re related to the family name Moran? So my nan's family name, yeah, before she became Jagger was Moran, right? Yeah. So like it's it's one one step away, yeah. And that's that's as far as I'm aware anymore. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So you are <clears throat> you are connected to the Moran family, and the particular family of Morans you are related to is from County Mayo, which is where the name actually comes from. So. In terms of location, yeah, we're on the money. You're right on top of each other. Do I get do I get a claim to your money? <laughs> That's not, this is what all up the fuck you do. Yeah, so me and Laura get a cut of uh, Beard's millions. So I have a photo <laughs> here. Look at his face. Of your great 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 grandfather William Moran, back in Ireland. Our. Would you like? Oh my! Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> Come on! Would you like to see? Ugh, so, 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 you're so, sweating, so, you, you know. You're so, so, so this is on your side, Josh. Okay, this sorry. Your right. family. And uh, what's really funny is he's got a massive beard. <laughs> he has got a massive beard. <laughs> oh, look at that! <laughs> that's top quality. That beard looks so tidy as well for the that. time. Yeah. So that's your uh, great, great, great grandfather right there. That's that William could be you. That you know. Let me let me see this a little bit more closely. <laughs> has he got a nice nose? nose is too big. I reckon to be. That's more like your nose than my nose. But I do like that. Makes beard. sense though, doesn't it? Like it's just. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, <laughs> why doesn't nobody look happy in these pictures? I realised they were mostly living in poverty, I right? Think, did they have but... to stand still for like really long time yeah. while it like developed? What, long <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really right. um, so you both did your DNA. Yep. You are both from the Moran family, of the same place in Ireland. <sighs> Don't let it be true. <laughs> Some terrible coincidence. I feel like Jeremy Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> the DNA test results said that you're not related. Oh, oh fucking hell, what a relief. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> so yeah, so in terms of in terms of the DNA results we got, there was no relation there. And obviously we can only get so far back. So this doesn't say the families aren't connected, but we can only get so far back in those yeah. lines. So it's kind of a dead end. Okay. So there's a little bit of... Uh, you get yeah. to keep all your money, mate. I'm quite, so, happy. Yeah. I'm, I'm quite happy about that, I've got to say. So there you go. <laughs> and that's it. Podcast done. I'll, I've been Danny Mitchell. See you later. <laughs> um, right. So let's dig, let's dig deeper. So that we, we've scratched the surface of the that's, family. That's just scratching the surface. That's scratching the Fuck surface. Me. So that's one, one claim. Dispelled. One dismissed. claim. We'll call it dismissed, yeah? Yeah, okay. So we've got two... Two fantastical claims Mick on, jo on, Monaco. On, jo <laughs> on Josh's side remaining, but we need to explore your your family as well. Piracy, it's, yeah. it's not it's not just about Josh. <laughs> 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 when, when she said they were pirates, they were actually copying DVDs and selling on cars. That's, that's what it was. I did think it was like probably just shit smuggling. Like I don't know. Yeah, she, she was selling blue movies in pub, <laughs> <laughs> making them probably. No, my <laughs> so um, yeah, so. Obviously, your name's Adam, which mm. is a biblical name, isn't it? The first man. Yeah, Hebrew, isn't it? For man. Yes, and so. Joshua. Yep. Also a biblical name. Yeah. Daniel, my name, also a biblical name. So we're we're riding the biblical wave right now. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's going to be a bit of a theme, like an underlying theme. Is, There's yeah. going to be like a. Right. I've, got, I've actually got. Look, I've have got, you got? Are you wearing some rosary beads? Yeah. <laughs> I've got one of uh, Tom Blackledge's shirts. Well, ah, yeah, Jesus has your back. Well, that is going to be. Um, I like that school. Yeah, that's that's going to be important for this next part. <laughs> Gra grapple, um, grapple. You're going to need him to have your back. <laughs> so, <clears throat> going through your uh, family, you know, there's a lot. What you got to think about with your family lines is this. So you've got two parents. Okay, four grandparents. Then it goes to eight great-grandparents. So it doubles every generation. So eight, 16, 32, 64. 
and that keeps going. So your family tree is literally like a tree that goes like this. So you get lots and lots of connections and there's lots of lines to follow. So I'll start following one line. So the Moran line, it stops there. So then I'll go back a step. Who did this Moran marry? This lady, this is her name. She goes there, you know, and I can follow that line. And that goes, it's a never ending process. Like I work on my family tree every day because there's so many lines. Whoa. You know, I've been working on it for years. It's massive. You know, there's thousands of people in there. There's all connections. Then you had marriages, cousins, and, you know, it just gets crazy. Um, so, you know, we've all, we've all got mad connections, but what I try and focus on is the more direct ones. So going through your tree, going back, uh, we en I ended up finding a guy uh, called Reverend Thomas Hurst. So it sounds so, like one of those like American preachers. You yeah, know? yeah, he does, doesn't he? Um, so he was actually born in Barraby in Lincolnshire yeah. in fifteen nineties. Your ten, your tenth great grandfather, ten x great grandparents. Yes, and uh, he was chaplain to King Charles the First. Oh, man, I don't really like the mon mon monarchical connection. I, I don't really like the monarchy, yeah, but cool, well, I suppose. Well, well, if you don't like monarchy, that's good because King Charles got fucking chopped up, didn't he? He got executed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, right. yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to, like, condone that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was the son of, like, uh, King, one of the King Jameses of Scotland. And then that was when Parliament, because the king was, like, above Parliament. The king had, you know, you had king and Parliament, mm -hmm. and the king wanted to be, like, you know, I'm in charge, Parliament, they want their say, and they had a big fight, and he got uh, got his head lopped off, I think. So, uh, cool. But the guy was a chap. this dude was a, he was a chaplain yeah, of some he kind. Was, yeah, he was, he was a chaplain, so he was, uh, he was the, the priest. I think maybe I'm like, I'm the, I'm the dude that disconnects us from religion, because like all my entire family have been religious like their yeah. entire lives. Yeah, that's, so, that's like, interesting. I'll be spinning in the graves now, I that think <laughs> I'm, I'm going to burn in hell, you know that what I mean? That is interesting. Do you believe in God? Uh, I think are, I was, are we getting too deep? It's probably a bit too deep. I think I'm probably I would say I'm agnostic in that I just think fucking I don't know. You know yeah, what I mean? I mean yeah. We're just on a rock spinning in space. Not in not in any kind of traditional um, sense. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it's interesting to know. What about you, Josh? Do you not believe... religious. I mean, like not to stereotype, but the RE teacher at our high school were a nonce. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's sort of put me so off that's a bit. Just tainted it like yeah, religious. Thought, nonce. Well, yeah. You know, living up to the stereotypes. Very interesting. So, so you would uh, <laughs> you would favour the evolutionary theory yes. over religion? Yes. Okay. That will uh, <laughs> we'll keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so you so you've got that that religious you know religious connection. Thomas Hurst, uh, chaplain to King Charles, which I thought you know was uh, was pretty good. Obviously, active in the 1600s, you know, so that's uh, you know, way back there. And uh, it's a di like I say, it's your direct 10x back, 10x grandfather, Grant Cardone's grandfather, 10x. <laughs> 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 you just 10x your grandfather. Um, so there's a so when I were doing the these trees, obviously, I'm doing them independently. So, you know, I'm working on your tree, working on your tree, and I'm bouncing backwards and forwards. And or I'll try and spend lots of time on one, yeah. otherwise it gets confusing. And then you know, I'll jump to the other. But I kept finding, power, you know, there's a lot of parallels. There's a, there's a Moran family, parallels. And then, quids in here. Yeah, and then, and then another, <laughs> another parallel that I find is you've also got uh, a famous priest as your... 13th great grandfather. Fucking hell, 13. Yeah, 13? So, so, so we're, talk, we're talking in the 1500s here. And he was a guy called Thomas Cotton. He's got, you know, you can search him up on Wikipedia or whatever. And he was a, a Catholic martyr. So he was actually back, back in the day when uh, it was a bit naughty if he was a, a Catholic priest. And uh, the Jesuits decided if you're a Catholic priest over here, we're going to kill you. Um, so he'd been traveling around France, I believe. I think he was ordained in France, came back here. Somebody grasped him up and, uh, yeah, he was sent to the tower of London. He was tortured on the rack, Whoa. which is a yeah, stretching yeah. machine, yeah, yeah. which breaks all your bones and, you know, and he was actually, uh, put in something called the scavenger's daughter, <laughs> which I had no idea what that was. So I did a little bit of research and it's basically like an A-frame like this that your body is inserted into and it compresses your body. So you think the rack is like, it's like the opposite of the rack. So you're getting stretched. 
Yeah. And then you're getting compressed, and he went through that, you know, multiple times uh, and, and survived before he was executed, and apparently they stuck his body, along with a lot of other Catholic priests, in boiling water so he couldn't be... Um, you know, they just basically destroyed his body because w- what they used to do back in the day is um, they would keep parts of, you know, saints or, you know, martyrs or whatever and, you know, to venerate them. So they wanted to just completely erase him. So they uh, they did that to him, which was pretty nasty. <laughs> Mad fuckers. <laughs> yeah, so he's, he's, in the, he's in the Tower of London. So uh, it, that was in the 1500s and, you know, a couple hundred years later, the Pope, Pope Leo at the time, you know, um, made him a martyr, a Catholic martyr or whatever. And uh, Martyrs in your family, mate. Wow. Yeah, so and that is a picture of him um, or a, a, a drawing of him back in the day being hung. That is a, yeah. That's Which not a good pretty picture. badass. Yeah, so yeah, man, with the Jesus thing on your back, that's uh, it's pretty, pretty yeah. apt. Yeah, <laughs> I think I just apostatized when I was on there. When I got, I got me on the rack, I'm like, look, look, man. All right, maybe I'm I not Catholic. Wrong. <laughs> maybe I'm, I'm not. You know, I was just, just don't stretch me anymore. This is a brutal like drawing. This there's people getting their arms and heads cut off in background and there's a fire. That's that. Are we allowed to show that on YouTube? <laughs> Since it's a drawing, probably. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to see that? <laughs> just a geezer hanging. Like a good, like, yeah, it's yeah. like a really elaborate version of Hangman. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking nuts, man. Yeah, that. so there you go. So you've you both got that connection to sort of like famous uh, priest figures. Um, so yeah, interesting to uh, interesting to see. So it was interesting, Josh, to ask just then about the your religious beliefs, yeah. saying that you know you don't believe in religion, which would be weird because so so when I'm doing. When I'm doing family trees, what what tends to happen is certain names, family names, crop up uh, that that I notice, and then I always, you know, delve more into that because you know the certain families, y- your family is named after you know a certain group of people, and they, they tend to lead back. Like when the Normans came over and took over, and they put all these people in charge. A lot of people are related to those original Norman lords who came over yeah. and their family names, you know, get carried down. So, like, you're actually, re- like, I couldn't get very far into this line, but you're actually related to the Lacey family. So, obviously, you got Brian Lacey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sweet, <laughs> so, 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 you know, it was a little bit of a dead end, but it's more than likely that you are related to the same Lacey family that Brian is. Because uh, Brian's family, I mean, we'll have to do a, 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 spe- a special with Brian. But Brian, <laughs> Brian, Brian, Brian's we, we family are actually, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, from Yorkshire as well. Yes. The, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the Lace family. And, and so there could be an interconnection there with, with Brian. Um, so you find these names, you know, when you're when you delving into things. Um, so one of, the, one of the names that I came across when I was looking at your family tree is the name Darwin. So your um, 10th great grandfather uh, paternal line was called William Darwin. Now there is a famous Darwin who relates to what we were talking about. He's don't, got- don't say Nunes. He's, 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 I'm, I'm, we're talking about <laughs> Charles Darwin. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, so you know, Charles yeah, Darwin yeah. is right. Um, so this William Darwin, who is your 10th great grandfather, is also the fourth great grandfather of Charles Darwin, the guy who wrote the theory okay, of evolution. Now. Whoa, yeah. That's mental, man. <laughs> yeah. So, so you are, uh, you are Charles Darwin's fifth cousin, six times removed. So when it says six times removed, that sounds like really far away, but it just means generations, yeah. six generations. So he's six generations back. You need to get that in your Twitter bio. Uh, that's great. Related yeah. to Charles so, Darwin. Yeah, yeah. So you're actually related to Charles Darwin. He was a massive racist, but, you know. Yeah. There you go. But I mean, <laughs> there's some good stuff in there. <laughs> People say that about Hitler as well, mate. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, he's, he's, he got rid of the, the Weimar Republic. You know, he did that at least. Let's not do anything for Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> not even a joke. Yeah, <laughs> he was an evil guy. Um, so, yeah, there you go. You are, uh, this you, is nuts, you are a cousin of, of Charles Darwin. Jesus. Which is mad. This is a wild part. I didn't expect any of yeah, this. I just thought we were going to go as deep I, as like... And listen, there's, lot, there's lots more connections, but I'm going off the closest ones yeah. that are like, that are, that are right, that's that are right in there. That's the podcast title right there. Yeah. 
So, um, yeah, pretty cool. That's isn't it? fucking. This is. Have, have you read any of his books, no, Darwin? No. I, I've read them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna have to. I'm have to yeah, read them now. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sold on his entire. I think it just. I would thing, just look but, at the cliff notes. You know, what I mean, like the basic, yeah, like, yeah. monkeys. I'll go, chat, <laughs> I'll go chat GPT. It's like monkey yeah. guy. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. He had some mad theories. Which I mean, it's mad that he's still taught in schools now because there is some mad like racial. You know, I, th- I think that I like mentioned in Hitler. I think that Hitler actually drew a lot from Darwin. With yeah, the, yeah, they, yeah, they say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah because it's like, but basically putting like Europeans above Africans. You know, like saying yeah. that, that we we are the master race or whatever. That's like a Darwinian kind of thing, which Shit. is crazy that that's taught in schools. That's a little bit. That's like, still starting schools now. Well, Darwinism, yeah, it's yeah. the theory of evolution, As, but it is. <laughs> they probably don't teach that specific part. <laughs> exactly, yeah, but, but um, I mean, it's it's not good. So, yeah, fuck Charles Darwin anyway. He's, yeah, he's a yeah I, I agree with that. Yeah. Back out of the Twitter bio. He did, yeah. have, he did have a nice beard, though. Uh, yeah, he did, he did, yeah. It's all about beards, isn't it? It's just... Anyway, what was, what was, let's get off the racist bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're down to the fine line here, yeah. aren't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, fuck evolution. It's all about Adam, the first man, the man that yes. God created. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's get religious anyway um so again uh going through this uh you going through your family tree looking at certain names i come across the name turpin which i found in a few yorkshire families so you think dick turpin yeah. straight away it's like st- let's start looking back now dick turpin was born 1705 uh and i managed to get back to william turpin in your family um who was born 1747, and then the line stops. So there is a potential that you are related to Dick Turpin. To so a criminal. Um, you know, you're related to this, yeah, yeah, the, the famous highwayman and robber. But um, but the line sort of stopped okay. there. But on looking for this, I found his son, John, had married a woman called Sarah Drake. Now, Drake is another, you know, very important family name. So I started, you know, delving into that. So... Your, your eight times eighth great grandfather was called Francis Drake. Yeah. Now, Francis Drake is a famous explorer, but your great grandfather was born in 1712. Yeah. Whereas Francis Drake, the explorer, was around in the 1500s. Yeah. Um, so what I did is I just started going back. So, cause names tend to get passed through the family. You know, there tends to be lots of people in, you know, especially in the older families where everyone's got the same name. It gets passed from uncles, cousins, the, the names get kind of reused. Yeah. So the name, seeing the name Francis Drake just pinged straight away in my mind. So again, Francis Drake, 1712 is your eighth great grandfather. Um, so I managed to get back to your 16th great grandfather, Mr. Uh, Sir John Drake. Sir. Sir John yeah, Drake. Dirty scoundrel. So, fucking knight of the realm. So, so, you, really, uh, so knight of the realm. There you go. <laughs> so straight away, straight away, we're getting these. Uh, you know, once you start getting Sir and Lady and stuff, you know you're in like important families. Um, so Sir John Drake, <laughs> he is the grandfather of Vice Admiral Sir Francis Drake. The fuck um, out town. So he was, you know, he was an explorer, uh, a privateer. Um, so do you know what a privateer is? So when we were talking about pirates, yeah. so, so a privateer is just, um, basically a pirate with a license. So when, when you're, when you're a privateer, you are, um, work, a pirate who works for the government. So, so it was, it was vi- so, so do you know anything about Francis Drake? Do you no. know? So, so Francis Drake, he was the first Englishman to circumnavigate the globe. Wow. Um, so yeah, an, a famous explorer. I know the name, but I don't yeah, know the. But he was vice admiral, and this is mad because you obviously you was in the navy. Yeah. You didn't. You didn't rise to vice admiral, did you? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> you was just a bog cleaner, <laughs> um, <laughs> toilet cleaner, sir. Um, he was vice admiral in the Spanish uh, when the English fought the Spanish Armada, um, which is pretty cool. This is my head. Which, 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 which is this mental, thing now. yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, <clears throat> yeah. It, bit, bit of a mad thing, but a privateer is basically a pirate. So, a, a pirate that works for the government. So, he was sinking Spanish ships yeah. uh, and doing all that business. Um, but he had a license to do that. So, he could do what he wanted on the seas. He was like, a, 
he was a free man of the seas where he could just attack people. That's and, pretty uh, cool. He had the, the James yeah. Bond license to kill of the sea. I think that's cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, I don't know about killing people, but like, yeah, yeah. It's cool. yeah, yeah but you like, do what you've got to do, you, yeah. Yeah, yeah he was a swashbuckler. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Cool, cool. So he died in uh, 1596 of dysentery. <laughs> 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 you've never had a strong stomach, have you, mate? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so he is. Uh, he is a di- so so that makes him a distant cousin. You share a you share a grandfather with uh, Sir Francis Drake, which is, is a, which is a bit of a mad one. Charles Darwin, uh, yeah, Francis so, Drake. So Francis Drake, I think he died at sea somewhere uh, of dysentery, but he was born in Devon, right? Devon, yeah. So now we're going down to the. But not to his neck at once. And that's yeah. where we lead into you. Yeah. 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 It's, it's magical how this all, there's so many parallels It's here. almost like you planned it, Danny. It's almost Danny like plans a, fucking this, all, these podcasts better than we do. This is unbelievable. Almost man. like I was up all night on Magic Mushrooms just seeing this <laughs> appear on my page. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't, honestly. I was just drinking water. Um, so... <laughs> We end up down in Cornwall now. So you, at the, at the start, you told us this. You are, your fantastical claim of the day was that your granny was a pirate. Is yeah, that right? Well, my, I, re, I relayed my grandma's fantastical claim that she was in some way related to pirates, which yeah. I just it, thought it, was bullshit. Your granny's called Cynthia, right? Yes. Right, yeah. She, she, she's from Cornwall. So that's cool that you knew that link. That's, that's, that's pretty cool. So through her family lines... You are related to a family called Killigrew. Yeah, the Killigrew family. In particular, a man called Captain John Killigrew. He is your 13th great grandfather. He sounds like he could be a character from Monkey Island. He was he born. Sounds like a pirate. Yeah, yeah. He was born in 1508 in Cornwall. And he was the head of a pirate family. <laughs> Fucking yeah, that's cool. <laughs> and if you Google the Killigrew family, you will find lots and lots of information about. Uh, piracy, like yeah. a bad pirate. They, they were, yeah. So you talk, <laughs> you're talking about, you're talking about Josh's man, and and the and what's mental is these are a, these are both in the 1500s. So Sir Francis Drake and the Killigrew family are both around at the same time. Yeah. Now, Sir Francis Drake is working for the government, and he's fighting against the Spanish who are under uh, Philip II of Spain. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're fighting, but at the same time, the Killigrew family, who you're related to, they're attacking any ships, basically, <laughs> that they can. I hope I sank uh, a few of yours, you're looking. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so you're, you're basically, you know, attacking a- any ships on the sea, both Spanish and English, and, uh, yeah, nicking all the wares. Stealing your loot, um, your gold. Yeah, so I think I think the, the main bee in the bonnet that they had was they was against... Um, Against Philip II, so they but they didn't have the be in the bonnet. <laughs> yeah, they 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 weren't working for uh, they weren't privateers. You know, they didn't have the license to do it. They were yeah, they were independents. Yeah. But but later, when um, Queen Elizabeth I took over, she actually knighted them, and uh, yeah, and and it kind and it kind of flipped. They were the good guys then. Oh man, uh, that was going good till they, they got knighted. They, now you're a knight of the realm. But yeah, sir. they uh, sir beard. Yeah, that's it. Because they, they were, so they were opposed to Queen Mary, who was Catholic. So that what, what is this Catholic? There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of religious. Yeah. It's mad that because uh, my dad, like, at the risk of offending people, my my dad, um, my dad was like a staunch Catholic. My, my mom was she wasn't a practicing, but she, her family were all Protestant, right? Yeah, which would make sense in that context. Yeah, so I used to always make japes about you know. <laughs> Yeah, that, so, whole, that whole rivalry. Yeah, so, so there's a lot. There's, a, there's, there's like an underlying religious yeah, yeah. tone, isn't there? You know, it's mad, really. Like, but, but I think, like, we, like you said, it, it's the religious thing stops at but both us, doesn't it? I mean, because like my granddad is still religious. The mum, I don't know if she's religious or not, but she still says, uh, "Night, God bless." She's still like, she's still got, a, she's dabbing her hand in a little bit. <laughs> are you are you religious? No, that, that's that's the twins are uh, not non-religious. So yeah, maybe that's just the modern world that we live in. I think it's yeah, I think that's, it's it's true that like almost everyone was religious. Like if you talk like a hundred years or prior, yeah. to that, yeah. but like it's less common now. Are you religious? Uh, I I am. Yeah, I'm right. gonna say yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've what? got like an open mind. So I'm not, yeah, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm not um, I wouldn't say I'm like a Christian because there's certain beliefs that you need to have to to be a Christian. But I believe in a creator. 
Okay. Yeah, God, whatever you want to call him, Yahweh, Allah, I don't know. Yeah. I believe in a creator, yeah, which is not, I would say most people these days growing up probably don't believe in anything like that, but I do believe, yeah, fuck uh, Charles Darwin anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we can, we can <laughs> back, suck that. Back to that guy. No, um, <clears throat> So yeah, so there was actually a, there's a famous lady pirate. She was called Mary Killigrew and she was like, uh, she, so she would be your 12th great grand aunt. Um, cool, so yeah, she, she was a famous female pirate ar- around that time, 1500s. So yeah. Boss pre- girl. Pretty cool. Feel like they, shooting people with flintlocks and stuff. And they, yeah, yeah. And they've got, um, so there's a castle. So, uh, you know, you could, you could go visit. If you're ever in Cornwall, check out Pendennis Castle, which was your family castle. Penis uh, Castle. Yeah, big, yeah, no, big <laughs> great <laughs> penis castle. Yeah, so uh, yeah, you should check, it. check that out. That's yeah. two castles. So the, the, so the killer grew family. So Get so castle back. <laughs> this brings us back to how I got into this. You yeah. know, my granddad telling me this fantastical story. You know, your nan's told you this story. Oh, we used to be pirates, and yeah, it is true. I am absolutely stunned that <laughs> that is something that, that is true because I've never heard somebody tell me so many false, like or just totally erroneous things in my life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> told me so much shit <laughs> that like I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call her after. It's actually just in case like she dies or something she's old as fuck yeah. and be like you're right Gran I think we've swore too but like this, we need to send this episode to his family members but we've already like swore too much in it sorry swear, that's my fault I thought no no it's alright no, right, no right, it's right, definitely but, not yeah it's, it's us but uh, yeah so, cause, so so it's mad that she knew that like because that's old information that's like you know 1500s getting passed down like that, that must have been a family thing they all knew that yeah. they were related to that I reckon family if, so that's, I, yeah, that's if, pretty cool I reckon if, like I was a pirate right and I had a kid and I was like, shit, my dad's a pirate. I would then tell people, tell every subsequent generation, just don't forget we were like pirates because that's kind of like yeah, cool. You have to, yeah, you have to cool. ring Jen and tell her because Jen's now got to tell her offspring. That it explains the alcoholism as well in Jen. You know what I mean? She yeah. loves just like <laughs> loads of grog. So like... Uh, <laughs> grog. <laughs> so that's cool, <laughs> But yeah, that's, I think that's pretty cool. That's like a pretty cool... Uh, it's all things mental, mate. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it sort of it sort of ties it together. So <clears throat> I'm just going to open my wallet now. Oh, it's going to do a magic trick. I'm not going to do a magic trick, but I'm going to get out some things, some, some wares. So, <clears throat> <laughs> the balloons or some shit. So this, what I have here, yeah, not far off. So this is, um, from the reign of Philip II. Um, so this is what Francis Drake and, and the Killer Grew family would have been taken off the Spanish ships. This is from a, this is from a shipwreck, um, from the 1500s. So that is, uh, I think they call it a Maravedi, which is a Spanish silver coin. So, yeah, pretty cool. Um, looks pretty worn and old. You probably um, would, I reckon, after like what, 600 after, years yeah. or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> but, 600 uh, years under sea. I've got pennies in my wallet. Look old as that. But yeah, I thought that was. That was meant, yeah. You've gone all out here, mate. This oh, is yeah, yeah. Like, this is it. And people are gonna be saying, "Can you can you do this for me?" It's like <laughs> this fucking this is gonna cost you. If you want this cool, <laughs> this is gonna cost you. But yeah, we probably should mention actually that you have. So Danny's been doing this for a bunch of different people, including others. That, uh, like you've you've done. Um, I've done Tom Aspinall, Michael Bisping, Paddy the Baddy, but I've yet to sort of deliver there. You know, I'm I'm, I'm waiting. For, this is the first time. Yeah, you know, I've been doing this a long time for for you know just person to person, just like private clients, if you like. And what what I really want to do is is make a bit of a show out of it, like because we you know we we could have we could have gone to this castle and we could have been there and then yeah. I could have delivered the bombshell. You know, imagine that, like yeah. taking people to. I mean, there's some and every family's got different stories. Um, it just it just you know worked out perfectly that you guys have got like this parallel kind of story going on, which is cool. mad. And there's a, there's a little bit more to this yet that we haven't explored, but um, yeah. And this is what I want to do. Bisping has got the cra- Bisping is like legit royalty. Oh my! Like Michael Bisping is, you know, he calls himself the Count. Yeah. And uh, I mean, if you read it, the first chapter of his book, it tells you about why he's called the Count, and he is a legit Count. Like he is. He is the, the probably the closest to royalty of like normal people you you, you could get. Um, he's got some mad connections, so I, I, 
You know, I can't wait to sort of, because he did say to me, oh yeah, we'll do like a Zoom and uh, we'll talk about it or whatever. You yeah. make a little podcast, but it's like, this is a much better setting, I think, you know, yeah, to just deliver it. Danny, lose- like when you get these people, like if you want, if you want to use a studio, like you sit people down <laughs> and fucking do it. Cause this is un- like, this is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. You need to record, this should be a series. Like yeah, yeah definitely should sure, be a series. Man. So we've got like Paddy the Baddy. We've got like all, you know, there's-, there's- How the fuck is that Danny getting, getting Paddy the Baddy is involved? It- we, we fucking, he won't even sit down here and scoff some fucking nuggets. I'll fucking chin you, mate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Clip that, Josh. <laughs> come on, Paddy. Come and have come and have some nuggets with beard. Um, so yeah, Brian Lace is another one. Um, I've, I've I've done his, so that right. that's, that's a really cool episode we could do. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I'll tell you what's gonna happen after this. Sorry to interrupt. That. You know who's gonna be messaging him. Fucking rate my take away. It'll be asking. It'll be in your DM saying, "Give me a free family tree." Don't don't say yes. <laughs> don't say yes. He's like, like yeah, you're related to Peter K. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I could actually bullshit some people. Can I just make up yeah. some mad thing? The maddest one I've had going off topic of you guys, because you were talking about some mad ones. That I've, one that I forgot to mention is um, a, a, a friend of mine from the village. Uh, his surname is Hess, so H E double S. Yep. Uh, which turns out to be a German German name. Start going back, you know. Great grandfather came over from from Germany. World War II, um, digging through his DNA and stuff. So it turns out his great granddad's brothers, so his great grand uncle's son, is Rudolf Hess, the deputy Fiora. <laughs> so oh my god! Uh, the, the main guy from the Nuremberg trials. You know, I think he died in like 1986 in jail. Um, been in there since the war. So yeah, that was a pretty mad one. Jeez. Wouldn't want to know that. He was on holiday when I told him. <laughs> yeah. He was on holiday in Egypt. And he was laid on a beach and I told him, I broke the news and I, I literally sent a picture of like Adolf Hitler with his <laughs> relative stood next to him. Like he was literally, I watched the Netflix thing with the World War II in colour and he's on there. It's crazy. <sighs> Like I say, Deputy Fiora, Rudolf Hess. And I, I sent him all this information and he just sent me a picture back like with his sum up smiling on this beach <laughs> in Egypt. All like, he's like, that's, cheers, cheers for that, that's mate. That's not a reaction, is it? No, no. I'd be, I think I'd be, I'd be drinking myself to death. I was like, oh God, no, yeah. I can't be related to that guy. Yeah, he's mad, mad, isn't it? But uh, yeah, that, that was a... It's mad that he doesn't know that and it's so recent, in recent times, you know? Yeah, like, it's that not, was a mad... It's, yeah, it's one of them like, uh, yeah, bit of a... And, and, and he, the weirdest thing is his dad kind of... I, as like a look of him as well. So that, that <laughs> were, yeah, a bit sinister. A bit sinister. Sort but, of Halloween um, though. But yeah, and Hugh, Hugo Boss sponsored him, give him a free suit. Anyway, that's an, <laughs> that's an SS joke for those who know about them. Um, for anyone that skipped through this podcast, just to <laughs> clarify, we no, are nobody's, not... nobody's a Nazi, nobody's <laughs> racist. Um, it, there's just been some uh, kind of slightly close to the line jokes about Nazis, I think. <laughs> yeah, don't be a Nazi, that's bad. Um, <laughs> So what I thought I'd do as well is I thought I'd just bring this. Um, so th- this is a bit of a later coin. So this is, you know, 1500s. So the age of piracy actually was from the 1500s to like the early 1800s. You know, that's when piracy was a thing. Yeah. Um, so this is from 1820. Uh, and this is a Spanish dollar, also known as a piece of eight. Ah, pieces of eight. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, it's eight reals. And what they would do if you, if I needed to pay you two reals, um, how would we go about it? Well, we would cut this into eight pieces, and I would give you two pieces of it because the value of this coin is in the silver content that's in it. It's not just a coin that's yeah. worth something. So by cutting it, you're getting that amount of silver. Uh, so that's like the change. So. Uh, this is obviously a whole coin, but um, in the past it was cut, and that is a, an original piece of eight. That seems like wildly impractical. You got to start cutting up silver and shit. Yeah. And you know that somebody's going to take the piss and give you a little bit too much or too. Well, that, that's it. So that's a good point. So just pass me here one second. So on the side, you can see that there's milling on the side. So what they would do is that was a way that was like an the first anti fraud device. So they would cut the coin, and if you you could cut like a tiny extra sliver off, and you could save all the slivers, and you could make a new coin potentially. So the little uh, the little marks on the side, they would need so many marks to make one make, piece yeah. so that you couldn't do that. You couldn't, ah. you couldn't, you couldn't chip a bit off and get away with that because of the markings on the side. That's cool. That, man. Um, so yeah, that is what people consider pirate treasure. What's the value of that in today's world then? 
Um, no, I guess not as an antique and then as like silver. Yeah, so so in silver, maybe. Oh, why have you got to sniff it? I, I put it right there. So I wonder how metallic it would smell. Yeah, all. yeah. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, that's. I mean, in terms, of, it's about an ounce of silver in there. I, th- I think it is, it's similar to a one ounce coin. I don't know the exact amount in there, but um, an ounce of silver. You know, you're talking. If you put it on, if you put an ounce of silver on eBay, probably twenty five quid, thirty right. quid. Um, but in terms of its <laughs> But in terms of it, in terms of its value as an antique coin, I don't know, in excess of hundred pound probably for a. Uh, wow, for, that's for cool. I have that shit, isn't it? Like, I wouldn't, wouldn't want to smelt it down for silver. I don't want to just have the coin. Yeah, yeah. So that's pieces of eight. That's what that is. Are we? Uh, how long have we been going? This is quite. Oh yeah, I can see the. We've only got two hours left to get <laughs> on with this. Tell me that, mate. <laughs> I'll, I'll get out in a bit. <laughs> We're nearly done. We're at the final. We're at the final. Uh, final furlong. Final furlong of family fun. All the Fs. Right. <clears throat> so let's let's jump then to Josh's final. Big Jagger. Uh, final. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, so we had we had Joseph Hobson Jagger, the guy who broke the bank at Monte yeah. Carlo. Oh yeah. Yeah. So let's look at him first. So he was born eighteen thirty. Uh, he went to Monte Carlo Casino in Monaco. So he was a businessman from Bradford. And fuck knows how he ended up doing this, but he ended up studying the roulette wheel at Monte Carlo Casino and he noticed certain patterns, whether the um, table was fucking wonky or so, I don't know. I don't know. But he ended up winning over 2 million francs, which broke the bank. So breaking the bank is where there is not enough money in the casino to pay him out. So they've got to go to the vaults, got to open all the vaults and... Uh, yeah, he became famous for that and he invested in lots of property in Bradford and all his family lived there and that's what he did. So he spent his millions on houses in Bradford. I wonder if we can reclaim any of them. But, them. but that's that's who he is. Um, and so I started looking through his family tree. Uh, again, the name Jagger, which you're, which you're related to. And we end up with um, lots of recurring names. Um, Jeremiah Jagger. Uh, Abraham Jagger. So again, bit, we're back to biblical names, yeah. yeah? Jeremiah, Abraham. So, you know, we're going back through these these links and the line kind of stops before it joins into your line. Okay. So, but there's a lot of similar names and they're all in similar places. They're in Halifax, they're in Huddersfield, they're all around that area. So based on the names that are in your family and in this guy's family, I would say that the families are connected. I don't know where, but I would say that he is, he is part of your family. Um, if, if I had to, if I had to put my Mick, life on Mick it, Jagger. no, this, so this, this, is, this, is, this, the, this is the Monte Carlo Monte Carlo. guy. Oh, right. This is the Monte, I just went way ahead. Then, yeah. Sorry. This is the Monte Carlo guy. Sweet. Yeah. So you're related to him. So, so we think we've got that. We think that's a winner. Uh, so then they started doing Mick Jagger's tree. Obviously, lots of people have looked into Mick Jagger's family tree. And you start going back and you start uh, getting names like Joshua Jagger, which is your name. Uh, you get James like, uh, names like Solomon, King Solomon out of the Bible. Cool well, name, biblical man. names cool again. Name. Then you get the name Abraham again. Must be the same family, yeah. but this time we can get further back and there is an intersection where you do share a grandparent with Mick Jagger. Fuck, you know. <laughs> this dude's related to Dar- Charles Darwin and Mick Jagger and I get a fucking pirate. <laughs> so, uh, listen, we're not, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Um, so, based on my calculations... Um, he he would be your sort of ninth cousin, a few times removed. You know, so there's a dis, there is a distant cousin yeah. relationship there to Mick to Mick Jagger, which is mad. Again, the Jagger family is a big family. You know, in the Halifax Huddersfield area. Um, so yeah, it lo- and it looks like this Joseph Hobson Jagger, this the guy who broke the bank at Monte Carlo, is part of that same family yeah. just because of the biblical names yeah. that Abraham's. You know. Um, but obviously some lines stop and some records are kind of distorted, but, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you're related to both of them. That's then, I don't see you this now, is course. where it gets weird. Oh, okay. <laughs> because um, in going through 
Um, your paternal line, the Moran line, obviously they're not all from Ireland. It gets back the other side is Yorkshire based. We also have a Jagger in your family. Surely not. <laughs> <laughs> and we get back to a guy called Abraham Jagger, 1629, who is also in your tree. So it looks like very, very, very distantly you are related. Um, <sighs> I you, I'd dodge that <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are related. Now, the thing is, when you do DNA, um, the DNA test is very, very good up to like second, third cousins, and then you get diminish, diminishing returns. You, you could have fourth or fifth cousins who you know for a fact are your cousins, but you, the DNA test, you, you will get no match yeah. on the DNA. So you can still be related to people in a genealogy basis without having the shared DNA. Because obviously we've all got shared yeah, yeah. ancestors when you go far back enough. Uh, so, yes. Yeah, so we we're related, So, man. unfortunately, all three, yes. in, in fact, if we add in your pirate claim, all four fantastical claims are pretty much right. <laughs> and, uh, halfway through there, I thought I'd dodge the bullet. I, you know, you've just ruined it for me now. I should have got up halfway. I thought, oh, we're not related. I've had enough. It's all right. But that's... Uh, yeah, so it's... it's <laughs> you kind of got to tolerate me now. We're like familiarly related. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. I think, to be fair, I think Josh is actually close, closer related to Mick Jagger than he is to you. So that's... Happy to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so you can have, you can have Mick Jagger. Um, so yeah, and that, and that kind of brings us to the, to the final thing is what we're saying is in doing all these family trees, you get to... This is why I love the Norman invasions, like William the Conqueror coming over, because what he did is he came over, 1066, 30 of his mates who all happened to be his cousins, and he took over and he put all of his cousins, you know, you can have Lincoln, you can have Doncaster, he put them all in places. Their family names became the name of that area, and uh, and we're all, I mean, most of us who are who, who families have been in this country for a long time, we're all connected to those Norman lords and, and somehow connected to each other that way. Do you know what I mean? So most family trees that I do, if I spend long enough doing it and I've got enough information and I can get back far enough, I can get to, you know, sometimes I'll get back to like the exact Norman lord who brought their name over from Normandy. One of my friends is called Baggett. That's his last name, Baggett. And I literally traced his name back to a guy, like the bread. A, a guy who, who, who was, his name was, his first name was Baggott or Bago or whatever you want to call it. He was, he was a Norman Lord who came over and then his family took his last name and the literally direct name uh, line leads to him, which is mad when you can find that. That is fucking nuts, isn't it? So to, clo to close off, um, we at this table are all related. Yeah, oh, and, and, I've, and I've found out how. All right, go on. Then. And uh, we're related for a pretty important dude. Um, how is that? Can't be true because you both, you boys are both, both hard as nails, and I'm not really. <laughs> well, this guy's hard as nails yeah. as well. Um, and and again, a lot of people, if you spend enough time doing your doing your ancestry, a lot of us are related to the same person. And uh, again, it's just the the how how things worked with the Norman invasion and stuff. So we're talking a thousand years ago. Um, William the Conqueror came over. Uh, so this guy who we're all related to, um, you're actually the closest relation to him. Okay. He is your 28th great grandfather and you're related to him. I found actually two, you, you're related to him paternally and maternally. So both sides is related to him. Shit. Yeah. Obviously very, very distantly. <laughs> um, so you're related through the Cornwall um, side and also through um, a family called Oldroyd, who you're related to, um, who were then related to the Beaumont family and then the tie to this guy. So yeah, this guy's your 28th great-grandfather. He's my 29th great-grandfather maternally. It could be paternally as well. Like we've all got so many connections yeah. to this guy. Um, so I'm 29th and he's your 32nd uh, great grandfather. So we've all got a connection to this guy, and that guy is the man himself, Mr. William the Conqueror. He's our direct. Okay, ancestor. Now. 
So, what yeah. a revelation! <laughs> so that, yeah, there you go. So you're you're the, you're the closest there in terms of generations. Yeah, um, I'm one back, and you're a couple further back. Um, Jeez. But yeah, he was he was the man. He came over and he yeah he took over, didn't he? He got rid of uh, Harold Godwinson, and uh, yeah, some man he was. Oh. And, and we're and, and this is why I like the Norman invasions because we are all basically a product of that. Uh, yeah, of that you yeah. know that time. You know, that's why we are who we are. The family names all came from that time. So I really like that. That was... Uh, that I'm, was mind-blowing. I'm, that was, that, I'm so glad that was a 100th episode because I thought it was going to be something shit like we were going to eat. We were going <laughs> to eat 100 Uluroos. We were going to eat 100 fucking... We were going to eat 100 nuggets. That's what it's going to be. <laughs> well, thank God for you, you Now you've said that, just under the table here. We <laughs> no. So yeah, there you go. That is, um, that is cool, man. Thank you so much. Thanks for, that. for doing that. Yeah. that was I, I, I can't wait to send this to like all the family. Just to, cool. they're gonna. Yeah, like, yeah. Both sides are gonna heads are gonna fall off. Aren't yeah, they? It's, it's been a mad one. Like I say, the ta- the amount of time though that's had to go into that and and going into all these avenues and you're going into dead ends. A lot of the time, it's like, yeah, and, and then so, sometimes it pays up. Sometimes it's like very hard to find things and yeah. But um, yeah, once you get, once once you get enough people at the start of the tree like so it's mad some people i'd be like right tell me all your grandparents names like oh, i don't know i don't know them and <laughs> yeah, you need lot, as much information yeah as possible. it's like if you know all like i know all my great grandparents names you know i did from an early age so it's like if you know that information the, the bigger the root of the tree yeah the more you can get back but when it's like well this guy i don't know who he was then you start getting stuck dna helps with that yeah um, but obviously not everyone wants to do any DNA because the government steals your data and yeah. I don't know about that. They could just read, they could re- uh, Yeah, you, they, they can do what they want. Are anyway, you happy for people to contact you to get this done? Yeah. Just so, like, cause I'm aware so, a few, so, few yeah. people's going to listen to this. I know, know, yeah. So I'm ready for just floods of people like, yeah, mate, if I give you 20 quid, will you do my DNA? <laughs> don't do that. This is not This is not 20 quid's worth of work. <laughs> do not do that. So I've set up, a, I've got an Instagram called Our Hidden Histories. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I, I just direct people to that. So all that stuff's there. Cause obviously my personal socials are all to do with MMA and random stuff. Knocking people out and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah which has got zero to do with genealogy. So I, I, you know, I'd really love to get like a YouTube or some kind of thing going up with just delving into the history, you yeah. know, traveling to different, I love going to like English heritage sites and, and looking around. I'd love to do like a tour, you know, do every English heritage site and like do like a little vlog yeah. for like the younger people, because historians are like old gray you know that's the you know the typical stereotype in it like an old person it's very boring yeah. learning about stuff like you can jazz it up a bit there's a lot of cool that fucking unbelievable that. Joshua saw it. We, we could you could have done like loads of sexy beer a couple of drone shots of a castle yeah yeah, yeah. Exceptional. but that was yeah it was just great, man. boxing in a castle in wales yeah, yeah. yeah but even as a podcast the way that you do, just delivered that information like that, that is that that's gonna be per- i mean i'd work it as well without like we padded yeah, the body man. Uh, michael biz being like yeah, you have to have a bit of dramatic music in Judge when he goes like, "Oh, you're related." <laughs> <laughs> right, so what? Just say it again. Where, 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 where can people? <laughs> Our survey said. <laughs> where can people contact you? Um, so my Instagram is Danny Mitchell MMA. Yeah, uh, I'm Danny Mitchell MMA on most most platforms. Uh, but uh, on Instagram, I've got a, I've got a, a page called Our Hidden Histories. That's kind of what I yeah. name. I History is plural. That might. Yes, yeah. Our hidden histories. Yeah, yeah. Just because history was gone, um, am I? Are we going to call it ancestry? <laughs> <laughs> we'll link. We'll link it in all the shows. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, but yeah, so you know, I do. I do offer this as a service, but yeah, I'm not doing it for for free. It does take a lot of time, and it is. Um, what sort of minimum investment do you think people need to be able to even get like a good? I mean, I can work pretty fast. I'm pretty, I'm pretty good at working fast. But obviously, you just got to make sure you don't make any mistakes. Yeah. And so, um, you're, like, you're talking like 500 quid a grand. Like, it needs to be like you need to yeah, be into a, it. a few hundred quid and really get some, yeah. really get something. And I mean, some people come to me and be like, oh, I want to know about this part of my family. And, and the problem is sometimes they might just be dead ends, and it's like, listen, we can't find out yeah. about that. It's better to just do it all and see where, where you know, takes, where yeah. the records can actually take you. But uh, yeah, I thought that worked. I thought that worked out pretty good. That Again, were amazing. Th- there's little Last bits in the there that that you know we haven't gone over, and you know I'll be able to send you a link so you can look at your full tree, and there's all kind of mad connections in there. And again, you can because once you get to William the Conqueror, let's just do you what you ever watch Vikings? No, no, oh. I don't really watch TV. No, I'm a weirdo man. Yeah, have you no. seen Jackass? <laughs> <laughs> 
But, but I mean, you've got like, um, have, you, have you ever watched Vikings? No. no. But you've got, so, so Rollo, who is like the, one of the main characters of Vikings. So, so Vikings is really cool because it's, it's not historically accurate, but the characters are real characters from history. The timeline's being condensed into a short amount of time. And they've done a really good job of like getting historical events yeah. into a, the same timeline, you know, and uh, so so Rollo is our ancestor because he is the great 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 grandfather of William the Conqueror. So Rollo invaded Paris. They, the French, gave him northern France, Normandy, and said, "You can have that uh, if you just stop attacking us." <laughs> and then he chilled there, mingled with the French. Um, his line of uh, descent was the Dukes of Normandy, and William the Conqueror was part of that direct line. And then he came over here and said, I want England as well. And uh, fucked us up. Cool, man. Well, he didn't fuck us up because we're his kids, really. Yeah. Um, Man, so, yeah. honestly, thank you. I'd like, yeah, George, we don't need to do anything more on this podcast. No. We, don't, I, I, we cannot ruin this. No, that, that, <laughs> that no one. vessels, no, nothing. That, Thanks for coming on, Danny. <laughs> that was the top class. 100 episodes couldn't have gone any better. Thank you so yeah, much, mate. Thanks for having me. I hope, I hope a lot of people come to you for this now because, like, that it was. I don't because I'll be really fucking busy. But, uh, <laughs> that's why you put on an exclusive waitlist and it looks like it's even more of a big deal. Good yes. idea. Yeah. Waitlist people. Right. Are we done for the 100th? Thank you so We're much. Thanks for coming on, Danny. Appreciate it. Thank you. And, uh, We'll see you and my distantly related relative over here uh, in a week. Yeah. Also.